Hello guys, this is the Gaidar. In today's tutorial, I will show you how to create this cool effect using geometry nodes. It's very simple and easy to create. It's not really complex or anything. And uh, let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm using Eevee and check Bloom. And then let's split up our viewport by dragging from this corner to the left. Change it from uh, 3D viewport to geometry nodes and let's uh, split another one upwards like that and change it to shader editor. Now select the cube and then press X, delete it and then shift A or whatever you want, import whatever object you want. Make sure it's not too high poly or too low poly. If it's too high poly just use a decimate or remesh modifier on it. Now shift F to focus on our object, for now I'm using Suzanne. And then let's shift A, add a camera. Control Alt 0 on your numpad and with our camera selected go to this menu and change to 3D cursor. Press S, scale up a bit just to uh, move the camera away from our mesh and then press RZ and rotate on the Z axis a bit. Now press H to hide the camera and select our mesh. Create a new group and shift A, add a mesh to curve node to convert our mesh here into a curve state. Later on we'll convert it back, don't worry. Uh, move this one to the right and then shift A, add a trim curve node, put it right here. and. As you can see, if I lower the end value, you can see that our edges start disappearing each at a time or individually, which is quite interesting. So we will use this to create our effect. Now shift D, duplicate this node again and put it right there. Shift A, search, type in reverse curve, put it right in between. Uh, this will create a cross section uh, disappearing effect. So it's not just in one way, it's both ways. Now we need a node to control both of these values at the same time. To do that, go to Shift A, Input, Value node and put it right down here. Change the value to 1 and connect it to the end sockets of our trim curves. So if I lower this, you can see it, it affects both of them. Now Shift A, let's add more variation by adding a random value node, put it right down here. Change the value to 25 or depending on your mesh and let's add a map node, put it right here, change it from add to multiply and connect the value to the top socket and the random value to the bottom one. This will create a more uh, random effect. So to do that, connect it to the second end value of the trim curve here. And if I play around with the seed value, you can see that we have this flickering effect here. We want it to happen automatically. To do that, sh uh, select the value box and then type in hashtag frame all in lowercase letters. So if I play the animation, you can see it happens on its own, which is cool. And let's finish up our tree uh, by adding Shift A, a curve to mesh node. So this will reverse this uh, transforming operation. So now it's going to turn it back into a mesh. But you can see we have zero geometry. To fix that, Shift A, go to curve permitted primitives and select a curve circle node put it down here change the resolution to something around 12 make sure it's not too high because it affects the vertex count here and change the radius to something around 0, 0, 0. 0.002 or something like that and connect the curve uh, uh, node to the profile curve here so now you can see we have geometry and finally, let's add our final uh, node, which is the set material node. Put it right there. So when we create our material, we will add it right here. 
now let's create the material so to do that shift space bar on our shader editor to maximize it and then create a new material let's delete the psdf and then shift a add a shader emission shader and connect this one to the surface node change the strength to 10 and then shift a texture voronoi texture put it right here and then with the node wrangler add-on select uh, enabled Control t to create a mapping node change it from generated to object and then connect the color to the color play around with the parameters until you like the effect for me i like to uh, change it to a bluish hue so add a hue saturation node and change the hue to 0.2 and the saturation to 0.8 let's go back to our view viewport there and if i go to the rendered view just to demonstrate our material we haven't set it yet so let's set it here change this one in the uh, set material node but you can see it's still not the way i like it so i'll add a an rgb curve node and let's uh, go to the blue channel and let's increase it this way maybe a bit like that and then let's go to our contrast channel and just lower it or increase it in this case so our material is set play around if you don't like the appearance and let's get going to our animation settings so to animate first of all let's go to the geometry nodes editor first of all i'll change the viewport shader or the shader editor to the timeline for now and make sure you have set your end frame count to 300 or whatever count you want the more the longer the animation of, of course you know that uh, make sure you are set at frame number one and change the value to zero now press i while hovering on top of this value box to add a keyframe go to frame 210 and change it back to one press i go back to or go to the end frame 300 and set it back to zero press i make sure you press i to add keyframes whenever we uh, change a value now let's go back to frame number one and go to our curve circle let's change the resolution to zero and the radius to zero press i and i here to add a keyframe go to frame 50 and change the res the radius to 0 0.02 or whatever value you had before and go to frame 150 and change the resolution to whatever value you had before press i to add a keyframe and if i play the animation now you can see that it uh, it looks all right but if you want to add more variation go to our modifier properties menu and add a decimate modifier move it to the top and change the ratio to zero press i to add a keyframe there go to frame 150 and change it to 1 or 0 0.999 press i and this is our effect done so i hope you find this tutorial easy to follow and useful uh, stay tuned for the next tutorial it will be a modeling tutorial so have a nice day don't forget to share your feedback down below and you can find the uh, the object or the blend files down in the pinned comment or in the description see you then